Okay, let's talk about the ILTS. And ILTS stands for Illinois Licensure Testing System. And the specific test we're going to talk about in this video is elementary education grades 1 through 6 test. And even more specifically, we're going to be talking about the math that you very well may encounter on this particular exam. So we're going to take a look at a practice problem that you should be able to handle pretty nicely if you're fully prepared for the ILTS elementary education grades 1 through 6 test. So if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing for this exam, and that is awesome. So uh, again, we're going to get into this problem here in a second, but let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over the last uh, several years, I've constructed many online math classes to actually include an ILTS elementary education grades 1 through 6 math test prep course. I'm going to leave a link to that course in the description of this video. But um, uh, all my courses, when I build uh, these type of courses, I, I really do a lot of research on what is on you know, these individual teacher certification exams. I have many, many courses, and each one of them I really do a lot of research and basically try to build a kind of custom curriculum uh, to you know, not over-teach you, but not under-teach you, really try to get it just right. But if I had to kind of characterize the math that's on this particular exam, I would say, uh, obviously you're gonna have to know elementary level math, middle school concepts, but you're also gonna have to know um, advanced high school level math concepts, okay? So um, if math is not your thing, even though you're gonna be at the elementary education level, you're, you're going to really need to prepare. So if you haven't taken a look at what is on this exam in terms of at least the, the math section of it, you know, you really want to go ahead and, you know, do so. And then obviously, you know, be preparing, um, you know, for the exam. And uh, let's go ahead and get into this practice problem here. So uh, the way I like to do these uh, problems is, one, explain what the problem is then let you have an opportunity to try to figure it out. And then I'm going to give a hint here in a second, then obviously I'm going to solve the problem. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is to simplify or add these two rational expressions. Okay, so go ahead and simplify them. So if I'm taking this thing, and I'm calling it quote unquote a thing, and I'm going to add it to this thing, and these things we call rational expressions, but they're basically... It's a fancy term meaning uh, fractions with variables in, in mathematics. I'd like you to go ahead and simplify them, right? So you're effectively adding uh, two fractions, and obviously these fractions um, have variables, so we refer to them as rational expressions in algebra. Okay, so um, if you think you know what to do, go ahead and pause the video and do so. And if you need a hint, I'm going to go ahead and give that hint now. So if you don't want to hear the hint, obviously pause the video. All right, so um, the, the, the thing is when we're dealing with fractions, whether they're uh, you know, numeric fractions or algebraic fractions like these, okay, again, rational expressions, we have to, when we're, at, we're asked to add any fractions, we're going to have to find the lowest common denominator. Okay, so the way you do that is we're going to have to factor the numerator, I'm sorry, the denominators, and then we're going to have to basically build the lowest common denominator in, in algebra, right? So for example, yeah, I got the solution here written down, but let me kind of go over here. If I had 2 fifteenths plus 1 third, okay, you would take a look at the denominator to say, okay, the lowest common denominator here hopefully uh, you, um, everyone out there knows, is going to be 15, okay? Now, this is a whole discussion, a uh, separate discussion on how you find the lowest common denominator. But let's just suppose you recognize, oh, yeah, it's 15. This already has the lowest common denominator. This fraction already has 15, and that's what we need to do this problem. So I need to kind of shape up this fraction such that it has the lowest common denominator, 15, and what I'm going to do is multiply this by 5, right? So if I multiply this 3 by 5, I end up with 15. But if I multiply the denominator by 5, I also got to multiply the numerator by 5. Okay, so uh, this problem, to do it, you have to do the problem 2 fifteenths plus 5 over fifteenths, okay? Or 5 over 15, excuse me. Uh, so 
at this point, what do you do? Well, now that you got the lowest common denominator, all right, and you have the same denominator, you can just simply add the numerator, okay? And this is basically the steps you're going to be following in this problem. So you remember in algebra, uh, effectively algebra is doing arithmetic uh, because these little X's and stuff are just placeholders for values, okay? So if you kind of forget and you get stuck, it's always a good thing to... Um, uh, to reference a, a problem, you know, with just numbers and think about the steps you would do, you know, take and then apply it to what's going on. But again, you know, that's just to hopefully get your mind going with this problem. But uh, uh, let's get into it now. OK. All right. So here is our problem. So we're looking at the and I obviously got the solution written out here, but let's just going to go through this step by step. So I'm looking at the denominators. OK. And I'm asking myself, are these the same denominators, right? For example, do I have 2 fifteenths plus 1 fifteenths? If I do have the same denominators, then it's easy. I could just simply add the numerators in an addition problem. But if I have different denominators, I have to find the LCD. So here, clearly, these are different denominators. So I need to go find the LCD. And in algebra, what you want to do is factor... Uh, the respective denominators, okay? So this x squared minus 1, I can write as x plus 1 times x minus 1. Now, if you don't know why that is, that's a separate discussion on factoring, okay? But we have x plus 1 times x minus 1. That is the um, x squared minus 1 factored. And then I have my x plus 1 here. So now to fix up this uh, problem such that they... Um, each of these fractions have the same denominator. What's missing? Well, I have an x plus 1 here, and I have an x plus 1 here, okay? But this fraction over here is missing the x minus 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this bottom, this, this denominator here by x minus 1. So if I multiply the denominator by x minus 1, I also have to multiply the numerator by x minus 1, Okay. All right, so hopefully you'll understand what's going on. Now, at this point, if you look, all right, these two denominators are the same. Okay, these this is the these are the lowest common denominators. Okay, uh, so we have x plus one times x minus one in both denominators. So I can simply just go ahead and add the numerator. So I have two plus x. Okay, that's right here, and I can go ahead because this is an addition problem and add it to the result of doing x times x minus 1. So what I'm going to do there is take this x and distribute it. So that's going to be x squared. And then x times minus 1 is a minus x. Okay. All right. So at this point, I can go ahead and just simplify uh, the remaining um, terms in the numerator. So I have 2 plus x. I have a positive x and I have a minus x. They're going to cross cancel. So that leaves me with x squared plus 2 over the denominator of x plus 1 times x minus 1. And you could, um, you know, rewrite this as x squared minus 1. That's not necessary. So this is it. This is this is uh, this rational expression. This, again, we're adding two rational expressions, two algebraic um, fractions together, together, and this would be the answer. Okay, so um, if you got this right without any hint, then that's pretty good, okay? Like really good, actually. Um, if you, you know, understood the hint and you were able to get it right, that's very good as well. If you understood the hint, but you just weren't, you know, strong enough with the algebra, hey, listen, that's pretty good. But again, you know, you want to use this as feedback. There's a lot of moving parts in this problem, okay? One, we just have to understand what fractions are, you know, how to work with them. We have to understand factoring. Um, and this is only one component of, of algebra. And that's kind of a part of all the math that you're going to need to know uh, for this exam. There's a lot of other topics out there. And I would classify this problem as like a new and average level problem, not overly difficult. Okay. So if you thought this was like super difficult, okay, you, you know, again, you just use this as feedback. You're going to have to, um, you know, really, you're really going to want to brush up on your math. And the only way to do that is to get fully immersed and do a ton of 
math problems and just if you don't know how to do a math problem, you're going to have to, to learn. So you're going to have to organize a good study plan. But let's go ahead and wrap up this video. So um, if you don't have a study plan, okay, uh, and you're looking for an excellent uh, course, I would obviously um, highly recommend mine. So I'm going to leave a link to my ILTS um, uh, grades one through six elementary education uh, math test prep course in the description of this video. Extremely, extremely comprehensive. I cover all the basic stuff, place value, fractions, everything else, all the way up to, you know, uh, very advanced mathematics. So you can check that out if you like. If you're new to my YouTube channel, uh, I've been on YouTube for many, many years. I already have hundreds of videos on my channel that can help you out. And I'm posting new stuff all the time. So hopefully you consider subscribing. If you enjoy the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Uh, kind of what's your story? Are you going from high school to college to the classroom? Or maybe you are like maybe retired in one career. Maybe you're a retired military and you're, you want to become a teacher. Or maybe you're later in life, you said, you know, I'd like to become a teacher and you're going back to school. Um, I think it's very, um, you know, interesting and, uh, you know, um, uh, cool, if you will, <laughs> of how many different ways there are to enter the classroom these days. But um, the one thing I always like to stress to to anybody out there is, you know, the first half of being a teacher is to get through all your certification exams, etc. But the where, where your real education is going to start is when you get in the classroom with actual students, parents, administration, all that stuff. Um, that's when you really are going to learn how to become a teacher and you got to give yourself experience or give yourself the time to gain experience. There's just no way you can, you know, study everything in a, in a book and then think that you're going to know, you know, be, uh, everything's going to run smooth. All right. Uh, it's, you know, you're going to get better over time is what I'm guess, uh, what I'm saying here. Uh, so latch on to those veteran teachers and, um, Learn from those pros. I tell you, they got a, so much to, to offer you. And don't be afraid of going to a teacher that's successful that you may think that, oh, that's not my teaching style. Learn from everybody. You can have two teachers, completely different personalities, completely different teaching styles, teach the same subject, both highly effective, and both of them, the students uh, love them. Uh, so, you know, you don't have to be like any one particular person, okay? Uh, you can kind of find a role model if that's what you want, but you're going to develop into your own style. But this takes time. It takes years. But first things first, first thing is to get past these certification exams. Do not underestimate the math on this exam because people do fail, uh, you know, uh, exams like this all the time. Okay, so it will be a win-win for you to really get prepared for this, uh, you know, with the math section on it. You'll get through the test the first time and you'll be that much more effective in the classroom. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your education career. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.